everyone. I'm continuing on with a prep level A and I'm looking at pages six and seven. Here the students are learning what a steady beat is. We all know that students must internalize the rhythm before they can play anything with ease and with comfort. So in succeeding at the piano, the rhythm is always taught first and then students learn how to play the pieces. So in this particular piece, the steady beat, go ahead and have your student walk around the room. They can march, they can step in place, they can sway, they can do anything that you would like them to do in order to get them to feel a nice steady beat. And while they're doing that, we play an accompaniment. took the second ending. So one of my beginner students, Maya, she was so excited about her first piano lesson and I said, let's go ahead and I'd like for you to march around the room and I'm going to play a march while you are, are marching. And so she started off with a really nice steady march and then she was so excited that she started run, run, run around the living room. And by the time she got back to the piano, <sighs> She was winded, and I said, oh, you're doing so well, Maya, and she was so excited. So you can see that in one of the videos that is on the FJH website. It's on the Succeeding at the Piano FJH website, and you can see so many videos of me teaching students how to learn how to play the piano. All right, so now the next page on page seven, students are taking a walk. And in this exploratory day, we're asking our students to learn um, about going higher, which is to the right, obviously, and then going lower, which is to the left. So why don't we go ahead and use that very basic, beautiful, perfect piano hand position that they learned with their four little hills and the letter C between fingers one and two. Go ahead and have them find one note at a time and form that perfect piano hand. And then just have them walk down the keys. And you can keep asking them, oh, do you see that letter C between fingers one and two? You can ask them, where are you playing on your thumb? And they'll say, oh, on that, that side tip of my thumb. So they're already learning good hand position before it's explained in the piano method. And then the same thing works for the right hand. And you'll notice here, the students can concentrate on keeping their four little hills up. And as you know, these are the, the knuckles where the students should play from. They're called the metacarpal joints, and I will talk about them later. Those are very important in piano playing. And we just want our students to be comfortable with that nice, perfect piano hand. Now let's take a look at page eight and nine. These first two pieces are the groups of two and three black keys. Now you'll notice that lovely artistic rendering of the, of the kids and the dog going up the mountain and then going down the mountain on page nine. They look kind of like Sound of Music, don't they, little characters? Anyway, hiking up is based on groups of two black keys and we're already starting to teach our students how to practice correctly. Practice strategies are a very important and vital part of being really good pianists, as we know. And if you know my book, Succeeding with the Masters and the Etudes with Technique, you know the idea of how important it is to teach students how to practice efficiently. So, the groups of two black keys. I ask the students to raise their left hand, and you know how that's challenging for some students, right? We show them that's a letter L, right? Wiggle fingers two and three, and then gently push these fingers in your thigh. Now, why is that good? The reason why that is so good, it gives them an extra sense of kinesthetic awareness. So they really remember what those fingers feel like on the thigh, and they will remember them when they are on the keys. 
Say the words in rhythm with your teacher. So you ready to do this with me? Hiking up the great big mountain. I love to point to the notes in rhythm so that the student's eyes always moves from left to right. So now the next thing we have to remember as good teachers is that this is not going to be easy for a student to do at the very beginning. So why don't we use a very important practice strategy called play prepare. So we have the students go ahead and find the first group of two black keys and we ask them how many moves are there in this piece? And they'll say, well, there's one, two, there are three moves in the piece. Absolutely. So go ahead and have them put their uh, fingers on the lower group of two black keys. And then we'll say, I'd like for you to look at the next group of two black keys. I'm going to say, ready? So they have to think about the next group. I'll say, look. They have to look ahead to the next group of two black keys. And then I say, move. And when I say, move, they move quickly to that next group of two black keys. Are you ready? I'll do it for myself. Ready, look, move. Ready, look, move. Ready, look, move. Okay, so have your students do that until it's very comfortable. Then have them play it. Ready, look, move. Ready, look, move. Ready, look, move. Then, we also have to think about how we want them to play these notes that are going to be disconnected. We want to make sure that the big arm motion of the forearm going down to the bottom of the key is what the students experience first. This all has to do with the, with the playing apparatus and how all the big muscles help the little muscles to work. This piano method, as I said, carefully teaches technique so that it is always correct and healthy. So, now, instead of having the student try to play only with these two little fingers, and you know they're going to become flyaway fingers, go ahead and take their arm and lift it and then have them come down with the entire Know that's what's going to happen, right? They might miss a note, but have them slowly play it like that. Okay? That way they're feeling good, big muscle movement. Down, hiking down. Guide their arms so that they can feel this big muscle moving down. The muscle moving their arm down. <laughs> All right, so this is very important that our playing apparatus works as one unit. So the fingers, the wrists, the forearm all go down at the same time. Okay, so that's the end of page nine and in our next video. I'll start with page 10.